Series, and especially data frames, are ubiquitous when using Python for data analysis. These two containers are provided by Pandas. A series is a one-dimensional homogeneous array. It is homogeneous in the sense that all of the data in a series has the same type, for example, floating point numbers or strings. Data frames are collections of series and are not necessarily homogeneous. This structure reflects the reality of working with data which may contain numeric values, strings, categorical values such as industry or hedge fund style, and dates. Each row in a data frame typically corresponds to an observation. Each column is a series and is usually a variable in a data set. Series and data frames support metadata in the form of an index. The index can be a simple set of integers or may be a more meaningful description of each row, such as the date or a company name. Data frames add column names, which are usually used as variable names in a data set. I have opened VS Code to the introduction directory. It is important to open this directory since VS Code uses this as the home directory when running code, and file paths in this and other notebooks are defined relative to this directory. Let's start by opening Lesson 4.ipynb. When the import is complete, you will see the notebook. Series are homogeneous one-dimensional arrays. A basic series is constructed by calling series with a list. All series have an index, and if one isn't provided when the series is constructed, the index is just an integer sequence starting with zero. Series also support a name, which is used to store the name of the variable represented by the series. Both of these features can be specified when constructing a series or added later. Series are entered using PD series, followed by a list of values, and then any optional arguments. We will start by importing pandas using its canonical name, PD. Series are entered using PD series, followed by a list of values, and then any optional arguments. First, let's take a look at a basic series without any additional arguments. Variables are assigned using the equal operator, which assigns the value on the right to the variable name on the left. We then use PD series, followed by a list of the three values, in order for the three stocks. I will copy the values from the table to use in the series. Entries and lists are separated by commas, which I need to add. If I put sep04 at the bottom of the cell and run it, I will see its value. This is a basic series that has the default index that begins at 0 and increases at 1 for each observation. Now, we can add the ticker names using the index. The ticker names are passed as a list of strings. If we run the cell again, we can see the index of the series contains the tickers. Creating the series for the second day is no more difficult, and we can use the data copied from above, add the index, and then take a look at the series. We will use the ticker names as the index, and so it will help to create a list that contains the ticker names to use all of the entries. Creating the remainder of the variables uses the same structure. Here I've accelerated the creation a bit since it's a bit tedious. Finally, running the cell creates each of the 12 series variables. We can confirm this by looking at the variable explorer.
If we click on view for a series, we can see the contents of the series in a variable viewer, which is a bit clearer. The next problem asks us to create a vector of dates. Dates are entered as strings, which are then converted to Python objects known as timestamps by pandas. Let's start by entering the strings as a basic list. Placing dates in the last line of the cell, we can see that this is a standard list. We then use the function toDateTime to convert this list of dates to a pandas date time index. Pandas attempts to guess the format of the dates. The simplest format is year-month-day. Now that we've entered the dates, we can now run the cell and see that the dates have a date time index, which we will use shortly when creating other pandas series. Next, we will create three series corresponding to each of the tickers. The index of the series is the dates we created in the previous step, and the name of each series is its ticker. Starting with Goog, we define the variable and use pd.series. I'm going to use block copy here to make things a bit easier, which uses Alt plus Shift to select a region, and then I can paste this region in. A small amount of code cleanup later, and I've completed the declaration of the series. Here, I have accelerated the process of creating the next two arrays, since we will use these later. We can print the three series to see their values. Data frames are collections of series where each column represents a single series. Data frames can be heterogeneous if the data types of each series differ. This allows for a mix of integers, floating point values, strings, and dates to be stored together. Data frames are directly initialized using a list of lists to represent the 2D array. Each of the inner lists is a row in the data frame. Data frames can also be created by merging multiple series or other data frames. This is a topic of a later lesson. Data frames are commonly initialized with column names in an index. Column names are usually used to capture variable names, and the index is used to represent metadata about each observation. Both of these can be set when the data frame is constructed or after by assigning to the column or index property of a data frame. The final problem asks us to create the entire data frame, which will have three columns and 12 rows. Data frames are created using pd.dataframe. Since the data frame is a two-dimensional array, it is created using a list of lists. Before filling the data frame with prices, I want to initialize it by setting columns and the index. This is enough information to tell pandas the number of rows and the number of columns, and Pandas initializes the data frame by filling it with missing values. Placing prices on the final line of the cell and running it, we see a data frame full of NAN, not a number, which is used to indicate missing values by Pandas. We can copy the values from the cell above where the series were created, and with the magic of post-production, I can quickly reformat these into a well-formatted list of lists.
Finally, leaving prices as the final line of the cell, we can see the output. This final cell saves the contents of the assignment to a file for use in later lessons. It isn't necessary to run this cell since the data file is already available in the data folder. Series are one-dimensional homogeneous arrays and data frames are collections of series. Data frames naturally support heterogeneous data. Both support an index which can be used to store meaningful metadata about the observations in a data set. A series supports a name, which is usually used to contain the variable name. Data frames have column names, which serve the same purpose. 